This video is brought to you by Sailrite. In this video, we'll show you how to build a French mattress style cushion. This is one of the easiest types of cushions to sew. It does not have a zipper or Velcro opening, but is simply sewn shut. The mattress style seams gives it a great look without the work of installing a piping. Let's get started as we show you every step and how to make your own using supplies from Sailrite. To get started, we first need to do some patterning on our decorative fabric. Cushions have a top and bottom plate and boxing on the sides. Two guidelines for patterning will be shown in this video. The first is for a cushion filled with fiber fill. A little later we will give you guidelines for patterning a cushion filled with a sheet of foam. Let's first discuss the requirements for a French mattress style cushion filled with fiber. Determine the size of the cushion that you want and the thickness. To cut the top and bottom plate, it needs to be 1 and 3 quarter inch larger than the desired finished size of your cushion. See our example in yellow here. Angela is marking the fabric to size here with a soapstone pencil and a straight edge ruler. We are using a sunbrella upholstery or furniture fabric which is the world's best outdoor fabric. Why? That will be discussed a little bit later on in the video. When marking along the width of this fabric, the locations of the stripes must be taken into consideration for this second plate panel. Here's where the first plate started, and that's also the location where we want the second plate to start, here, along the same line, so the repeat is the same between top plate and bottom plate. If you've done it correctly, the end point of this second plate should fall on the same stripe as the end point on the first plate we made. Next, we need to mark for the boxing in both width and length. To calculate the width of the boxing, we need to add 1 and 3 quarter inch to the desired finished width of the boxing that you want. This extra amount will account for the mattress style seams. For our cushion, we want it to finish at about five and a half inches in thickness, so we will add one and three quarter inch to that figure, making our cut width seven and a quarter inches. We also want the stripes to line up, so we will position the boxing right above the two plates we just traced out on the fabric. The length of the boxing should match the plate's length on each side. Our cushion is square, so all four are the same length. Obviously, the boxing on the side of the cushion will not line up with the top and bottom plate stripes. We are cutting our umbrella fabric out with the Sarite Edge Hot Knife. This seals the edge of the synthetic fabric, preventing the unraveling of the fabric. We are cutting on top of a metal ruler to prevent damage to the tabletop below the hot knife. Our two plates and four boxing strips are now cut to size and ready for sewing. We have now covered patterning for a cushion filled with fiber fill. Let's move on and touch on how to pattern a French mattress style cushion filled with a sheet of foam. To cut plates for this, simply add 3 quarter inches on all sides. To cut the boxing width, use the foam thickness and add 1 inch, and then add between a quarter inch and 3 quarter inch for seam allowance. This will result in a cover that compresses the foam slightly, making it look great. The length of the boxing should equal the sides of the plates. If you're making a cushion using a sheet of foam instead of fiber fill, you want to skip this chapter. Since this cushion will be filled with a polyester fiber fill, we want to make a pillow insert which will house the fiber fill. To make this, we will use spun bonded pillow protector fabric. This fabric is inexpensive, breathable, water repellent, and soft. Fold the spun bonded fabric in half and then fold it over one more time to the width slightly larger than the width of the boxing. Then trace around a plate and a boxing strip. As you can see, we will get two plates and four boxing strips all at once when we cut it out. These plates and boxing strips for the pillow insert do not need to be extremely accurate in size, since they will just be used to house the fiber fill. No reason to use a hot knife on this spun bonded fabric as it does not unravel. We now have all the plates and boxing strips cut for our cushion in both the decorative fabric and the spun bonded pillow protector fabric. It is always a good idea to lay the fabric panels out in an organized fashion before sewing. This reduces the chances of mistakes exponentially. No matter if you're making a cushion filled with fiber fill, as we are, or a sheet of foam, the construction is the same for both. 
Start with the boxing and lay the corresponding boxing strip onto the opposite leg so outside surfaces are facing each other. Then sew the two strips together along the short end with a straight stitch about 3 8 inch inside the raw edge of the fabric. Be sure to do some reversing at the beginning and the end of your stitch to lock at the stitch in place. Take the assembly over to where the panels are laid out and grab the corresponding boxing strip and repeat the process. Always go back to the panels as they lay on the table and check to be sure the stripes are running the correct direction and also that they will line up with the plates, along the two sides that is, as it is impossible for them to line up along the other two sides. Once all four boxing strips are sewn together, it's time to join them together to form a complete chain. Be sure the outside surfaces are facing each other and sew along the end that completes the chain. We will not show sewing that. Now take the boxing assembly over and line it up with one of the plates so the stripes are all even. Flip the boxing over so outside surfaces are facing each other and the edges are even. We will start sewing near the center position on this side. We will use a straight stitch set to about 6 millimeters in length and sew about 3 8 inch from the edge of the fabric. Be sure to line up the stripes and the edge carefully as you sew. Notice that when Angela gets to a corner she will bury her needle in the thickest part of the shaft and lift the presser foot, rotate the fabric on the corner and then lower the foot and continue to sew down the next leg. Because this side does not have stripes that match the plate, we cannot use them to line up the boxing to the plate. So, she will ensure that the opposite corner will line up with the plate's corner. This is not extremely crucial for small cushions, but for larger cushions this is a very important step in keeping the boxing and plate's edge length the same while sewing. Continue sewing around all sides until you reach your starting stitch and do some reversing there. We'll not be showing that. Now that the boxing is joined to one plate, we simply need to sew the assembly to the last plate. To do this, line up the plate so the stripes will match on the two sides they matched for the other plate. Be sure outside surfaces are facing each other. It is easier to sew this assembly with the boxing on the top and the plate on the bottom. We will not actually start sewing near the center of this boxing, but instead will move about two to three inches away from the corner. Why? Because we want to leave one side open for the later insertion of the cushion insert or foam. Now just sew around, securing the boxing to the last plate, just as you did earlier. As we discussed, here on this side the stripes cannot be matched up, so check to be sure the corner will match up before sewing this side. On larger cushions this is very important, on small ones like this it is not. We have skipped ahead here and are coming to the last side again. We want to go around this corner and then stop sewing about three inches from the corner or away from the corner. This leaves an opening for the insertion of the foam or insert in a later step. It is very important to do some reversing here to lock the stitch in place and also helps to keep the stitch from coming apart when the insert or foam is pushed inside the cover. Turn the cover right side out. Next, we will sew the mattress style stitch along all sides and even at the corners of the cushion cover. To do this, fold the fabric out flat along each seam and try to position the seam at the extreme center edge of the folded assembly, as shown in the video. Then position the assembly so the stitch starts at about a half inch away from the side's corner and about 3 8 inch away from the folded edge. To keep the first seam centered correctly, 
sew a few inches and then bury the needle, make adjustments to the assembly, and repeat. When you reach the next corner, stop about a half inch away and do some reversing. To move on to the next edge, we will not even cut the trailing threads. We will simply remove the needle from the fabric, lift the foot, reposition the assembly just as we did earlier, and sew on to the next corner. As you watch to see how Angela does this, let's discuss the merits of using Sumbrella upholstery or furniture fabric for outdoor or indoor cushions. Sumbrella is the world's best upholstery fabric because it is 100% solution dyed acrylic. The colors stay bright and vibrant even if the fabric is left outdoors in the sun continuously. It is also very water and stain resistant. Other brands of decorative fabrics are also available at Sayerite. Some are specifically made for indoor only climates and others are considered an occasional outdoor fabric. If you have questions about the type of fabrics that we offer, give us a call at Sayerite. This plate and boxing is now finished with the mattress style seam. Now we move on to the opposite plate and boxing side. When sewing this, do not finish or sew the side that is left open for the insertion of the foam or pillow insert. It will be sewn shut in a later step. Let's move on and show sewing one of the corner edges of the boxing. Same procedure. After all sides except the opening are finished, we are ready to insert the foam or pillow insert. We're going to use a fiber fill for our cushion. That's coming up next. If your cushion uses a sheet of foam, skip this chapter. If it uses fiber fill, keep watching. If your cushion is using fiber fill instead of a sheet of foam, we recommend you build a pillow insert from the spun bonded fabric we cut earlier. The construction of the pillow insert is done exactly the same way you build the cover, except you will not be sewing the mattress style seam in this. Okay, some of you caught the fact that the pillow insert will be larger than the umbrella fabric cover. Good job! That is intentional. We want the pillow insert to fill the cover tightly for the best look. When sewing, don't forget to keep a side open, just as we did with the Sumbrella fabric cover. We need to fill this cover with a polyester fiber fill. Turn this cover right side out. Sayerite sells a very large 10 pound bag of polyester fiber fill. Sayerite's fiber fill is slick and very soft, which helps to keep bunching of the fill to a minimum. This 10 pound bag will stuff about five of these size cushions, or if you're making a standard size throw pillow, it will typically fill about 12 to 15 of them. Here we are filling the pillow insert we just made. We will fill it so it's rather plump. For this size of cushion, we believe about two pounds of stuffing is perfect for a cushion that is about 20 by 20 by five inches. The amount of fiber fill used is completely up to the end user. When stuffed to our satisfaction, we will close up the opening. No hems will be made here. Instead, since no one will see this insert, we will simply sew the two flaps of fabric with a single stitch. Be sure, as always, to reverse at the beginning and the end of sewing. Is it possible to get that pillow insert inside a small hole like this? Yes, but it is rather difficult. So to make our job easier, we're going to use silk film from Sayerite and compress the insert with a vacuum. Angela will lay the silk film onto the table. It is center folded, so be sure to splay open the two halves. 
Then she will cover the pillow on all sides, overlapping the silk film by 12 inches or more. Next, insert a shop vac hose end on top of the pillow insert so it's clear of the silk film and turn the vacuum on. As soon as she closes up the bottom, notice how the pillow insert compresses almost to half the size. This will make it easy for us to insert it inside the pillow cover. Once it is inside the cover, she will turn the vacuum off and watch how it expands. Okay, you can do one of two things here. You can leave the silk film in the cushion, which does provide a level of water resistance to help keep the foam or fiber fill dry if used outdoors, or you can remove the silk film from inside the cover. Silk film is excellent for easy cushion stuffing and for water resistant protection, but for a medium or soft foam, it can take a while for the cushion to expand quickly when a person gets up off the cushion. So the choice is yours. We are using a umbrella fabric which is already water resistant and spun bonded pillar protector fabric which is also water resistant. So we will remove the silk film. To sew the opening closed on the cover, we find it easier to remove the sewing machine from the collapsible sewing machine table. So the cushion's weight will rest on the table as we are sewing it shut. Here we need to create a folded hem to simulate the rest of the sides of the cushion. So Angela will fold the fabric in along the two edges of the fabric and start sewing about a half inch from the corner and three eighths inch from the folded edge. With the fiber fill stuffing, closing or sewing up the opening is not too difficult. But if a sheet of foam were used instead, you will find it much more difficult, but possible. A suggestion for closing up the opening when a sheet of foam is used is to pin the folds in place prior to sewing. Our French mattress style cushion is now complete. If you want to build one using a sheet of foam, the patterning sizes are slightly different as shown in the patterning chapter, but the construction techniques are exactly the same. Coming up next is the materials list and tools that may be required to do it yourself. We used a umbrella upholstery or furniture fabric, but you will find hundreds of other great decorative fabrics at Sayorite. For more free videos like this, be sure to check out the Sayorite website or subscribe to the Sayorite YouTube channel. It's your loyal patronage to Sayorite that makes these free videos available. Thanks for your loyal support. I'm Eric Grant, and from all of us here at Sayorite, thanks for watching.